Uh, I'm Christian Jorn, president of Remora. Uh, I've been serving car dealer websites to franchise and independent car dealers, uh, mostly franchised, uh, for 10 years now. Uh, I started in a uh, car dealership, Santa Fe Ford in uh, Gainesville, Florida. I was selling cars, the internet manager. I got uh, noticed because I was bringing my laptop in and, uh, and uh, selling cars off of Craigslist. So uh, this was an old out of town sto store with just dinosaurs, no computers. Uh, this would be about 2004, five, six, seven. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, I'm in there for a couple of months, it's just selling cars and uh, he boots the internet guy onto the floor and I helped him uh, fix his inventory, got, uh, got inventory processes in place and then uh, <coughs> told him, you know, Internet can do 75 cars a month, but I can't deliver them all. I need assistance. And uh, it was like this beautiful moment where uh, we had, he, he uh, it, Greg Wakeus, the owner, uh, had a, uh, was very uh, important, BDC was important to him. He was buying uh, special finance leads about 18 or $20,000 a month from car.com and a couple other, and Blue Sky. And uh, he had the boiler room set up but the boiler room was managed by a 19-year-old that uh, blew out of there one day, changed all the passwords. <clears throat> and it so happened to be about the day after I went to Greg and said, I need assistance. He said, it's your lucky day. <laughs> so I immediately started managing three full-time girls, making uh, 100, 150 calls every day. And I was the turn. So, uh, so that absorbed you know, a lot of my day. Um, and, and it was great. <laughs> like, uh, the car business is where I became a man. It's where I became financially free. Uh, and it's where I learned work ethic. Uh, it, it, it holds a special place for me personally. And, and, um, <clears throat> and so this was birthed because of, of that, really. Uh, I, I feel like car dealers are the salt of the earth. They, uh, you know, work very hard for very little and provide a very real service that people need, transportation. And we cover every bit of it. And we will buy your car today and put you in a new one in an hour for a signature half the time. That's a nice service. Uh, so, so, uh, so I was in this position in 2007. And in 2007, uh, Everybody remembers that was in the industry then. Uh, went from, if you have a shirt, you can get financed to 715 Beacon, can't get financed. They better have a big down payment. And so all of a sudden, this 18 to 20K we're spending on spy fi leads is not making the 80 to 100K in gross that we were used to. And so, so it just dried up overnight. And I felt faced with this uh, task of, he said, here, you know, we spend all this money, but this isn't working, so here, spend it and get us primary business. Great. Uh, you know, I had a background in computer science and already was dabbling with the stuff, so uh, I said, you know what, organic search, we're right outside of Gainesville. If we, can, if we can have visibility in Gainesville and beat the used car stores that are dominating there, uh, then we can do more business, and it worked. Um, so, but before it worked, I trumped every company at, in, at the time, at the time it was dealer skins, I don't think they're still around, uh, um, but they were the hottest thing. It was all flash. You could, they could do anything with your website and dealers were amazed. You could have people walk out there and sell a car right on the website. Problem was Google only sees it as a movie file can't see anything. Uh, so, so they were disqualified instantly when I met with them. And then, uh, and then uh, everyone I met with was not saying the right things, except for one company, a dealer.com, who we hired. So they're gonna build backlinks, do all this, these things, and, which was important at the time. And it's still important, but more important at the time. <coughs> and, and, uh, Six months into the into this, I'm I'm looking at Yahoo Site Explorer, going, well, here's these press releases I sent. I built some links, and where are theirs? 
And I call them and I get my rep and she says, uh, oh, we don't build links like that. We only build links on the site. I said, well, I have a contract here that says you're building links for us. That's why I hired you in the first place. And uh, well, we don't build links like that. So, hold on one second. Oh, we have a whole link building department. She just found out about it. And, uh, and so, so uh, I would go to Greg and say, look, they're not doing anything. This isn't working. He says, you do it. I did it. So I stand up a website. We went from 70 sleepy 75 cars a month outside of town dealership to like 150 every month. Lickety split so as soon as we ranked number one for a few terms like used cars Gainesville and back then the broader terms were more impactful because people didn't have this breadth of knowledge of how to search. You know, originally there wasn't a search engine. People, I remember even in school being taught in the summer computer class to, uh, if you want to look for something, just guess the domain. <laughs> you know, uh, you want to see, see, search for wine, try wine.com, right? Well, search has evolved from that, it, but it, as it evolved, there was massive traffic coming to these very uh, broad terms, and now it's much more spread out. Uh, but, but, it made, a, it made so much impact that it was, it was crazy. So uh, I felt like this is too big for Santa Fe Ford and that, uh, that the industry needs this. Um, that I personally vetted every company in the industry and while they all had lots of hypey, wonderful things to say, uh, when it rubber meets road, only one was saying the right thing and then they weren't doing it. Uh, so while it appeared from the outside to be just so oversaturated with website providers for car dealerships, to me it appeared that no one was actually providing enterprise service. So here we go. We'll go start getting on some slides, I guess. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Who spends a lot in paid? Who spends the most? Fifty. A hundred, okay, a month, more? Okay. So, and, you know, is there, is there an opportunity paid? Of course. Of course there is. You know, Google's identified the commercial terms. They know how to monetize. They're not stupid. Um, but it's still 95% that goes through organic is the fact Only 5% of web traffic goes through paid ads at all. We're spending 100K a month and ignoring organic. And I'm, I'm sure you say, oh, well, I, have a, I have a SEO. I laid it on my program site. And I will show you that that's not enough. <laughs> Uh, this is a Moz study, a large study over two years. This is month by month, and that red dot on the top is your uh, traffic from paid. And uh, I've, I've been uh, challenged on this that Moz is an SEO company, and of course they would say that. Um, but Nielsen is not an SEO company. And Nielsen says the same thing. Massive study, they came up with 6%. This was actually a study done in collaboration with Group M, the company famously uh, that marketed Facebook into our minds. <clears throat> Here's a big part of the reason why. People run ad blockers. They're free. The requirement to run one is 10 seconds and a pulse. under 40 years old runs ad blockers. Anyone who uses a computer, regardless of their age, every day, runs ad blockers with one exception. All y'all. And it's because you look at your own ads. And I implore you to use the AdWords preview tool to look at your ads. It saves you money even to do it that way because you're not falsifying your impressions. And and, uh, but regardless, you should get accustomed to seeing results the way your customers see them, which is not, is that ad-free life. They just live it. 
They don't see your display ads. They don't see, they, you know, we have 380 million mobile ad blocker downloads in 16. There's only 300 million people in the United States. Only 80 million of them are consumers, and less than that are consumers of cars. especially new cars. <clears throat> so why does it matter? Uh, it, it's everything. It's all of the traffic. You guys are fighting with OEMs, tier two, and each other over this tiny sliver, which artificially just jacks up the price and, and uh, creates an industry that's ripe with fraud because there's not even enough inventory for your demand, as Nielsen show. So, so we got $4 VIN tenders in this industry that's penny traffic. <laughs> so here's organic. Uh, Subaru dealer near me, broad term. Uh, not only do we rank number one, we rank in the map and we get sublinks. These sublinks go to individual pages. In there. This is what you should expect if you have enterprise service. You should expect to win. Chevy dealer near me, sublinks, number one, number one in the map, makes a huge difference. Chevy used, get out of my way, Chevrolet. Get out of my way, car gurus. Double listing and number one on the map. If your SEO company isn't showing you this, they're not doing what needs to happen. Here's more specific, which is actually more critical. You're, uh, for sales at least, for sales, uh, you know, your, your Chevy dealer term, that's a service term. So ranking on uh, that can help your service department. That's, that's what people, but when people search 18 Chevy Malibu Premier, they're not looking for service. They're looking to buy one. They're done with their research. And we all know that there's a good chance they flip to something else by the time they leave the dealership. But when they're on their computer at home, that doesn't matter. Because we're just trying to make a lead here. We're just trying to get an opportunity to talk to them. So when they're on their computer at home, they know what they want. They've already decided. And so, if, so when we make that handshake happen, you know, that's, it's a fit. And so, so because this entire industry is asleep at best, um, the beating of dealers is like a non-issue. That's free. That should be free for any enterprise provider. Uh, we take our chunk out of Auto Trader, True Car, and Car Gurus. That's who we beat. They are very clear. They, they have clearly identified the, the consumer behavior, and the consumer behavior is known. Google wrote a whole book about it called The Zero Moment of Truth and uh, spent, you know, umpteen millions of dollars in research, and we know how consumers behave. So the consumer behavior is known. The key terms that people search that matter, that are commercial, that turn into money and business and sales are known. They're known by car gurus. They're known by auto trader and they're known by true car, Edmonds, seemingly no one else because we're the only ones playing in the space at all. And we're crushing. So uh, we're getting uh, number one, number two, we're triggering the knowledge graph, even on a commercial term. Sometimes it comes up here like a little half Z. But, and you're used to seeing this on um, your name, but you're not used to seeing it on Chevy Malibu. Uh, here we're all five images beating Auto Trader here again. Um, here is the largest Toyota dealership uh, on Long Island. Specific term, we're triggering the knowledge base. We're four listings. We're getting pricing through uh, ad blocker right here. And car gurus, car gurus, true car. These are not terms that you see dealership websites on ever. So it's on or under the train is the truth. 
Here's another one. Uh, we're number one, two, three, four, getting pricing through and all five images beating car gurus. This is going to be another no dealership anywhere near this term. And you've, uh, you may have heard some companies coming up here and saying, you don't have the brand, Mr. Dealer. Quit asking me about commercial search terms. You don't sponsor the NBA playoffs, but AutoTrader does. And I'm here to tell you that you're a better result than AutoTrader. You're a better result than TrueCar. You're a better result than car gurus because you sell cars. You buy cars. You exist as a brick and mortar dealership in their area and can sell them a car now. And none of those other entities do that. Google wants to provide the best possible result. They've clearly identified these terms are the, are the commercial search terms that people use when they're making a purchase and looking to purchase. And so, so winning on these terms, it's very black and white. This works every time. There's no, it's science. So as far as it working for the dealership, it's only a matter of is your trap set. If your processes are all over the place and you bounce any, everybody anyway, then it's not going to work for you. But it's going to increase your opportunities still. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's uh, some analytics. Uh, this is Dimit Chevrolet. Program site was good for them for 1,000 uh, visits a week on average from organic. Uh, they've increased 71%. Uh, you can see it happened right away and has, has sustained. And so obviously, like, that's the next question, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to step back a, just a second and paint a picture of how it used to be, because I've been doing this a long time. And it used to be that you could trick the spider, and that that was largely the best return on your time. The spider was literally a program that ran around in spider websites, and it would count what it saw there. And so that was all it could do. And then they were trying to take and hook into these quality indicators and, and turn, it into, turn it into preferential treatment, right? It's a, it's a tall order. Billions of results, I need the top 10, and I need them in the right order. <laughs> uh, so you know, all they could count is pages, words, images, years, you know, age of domain, uh, links, changes, those kinds of things. It's very limited what they could see, so it was easy to trick the engine. You know, you want to show the user text, but you don't want the, Im the uh, engine to see it. You just make it an image. You know, there's a million little tricks that, that you could do, uh, little tricks. And it was largely about tricks and secrets and, and uh, kind of a link building arms race. It's not like that anymore because Google is uh, on the ball and they are, this is a D wave. This is actually the closest we've got to absolute zero as the human race. It's 22 nan nano Kelvin. And that is used to cool the chip that they're using to try to break quantum computing and, and a, as used for AI. Uh, NASA and Google, it's a joint thing. They both lease this computer. <coughs> so NASA uses it for space exploration, of course, but Google uses it to crunch linguistics all over the world. So that means that their computers can read and understand content now. So this is, they don't even show this anymore. This, they took this away. This is an old slide from an old presentation. But they used to, you used to even be able to search by reading level right there in their interface. They eventually took that away. Um, but you can, you can now, you can still search by timestamp, by uh, image size, color, usage rights, all that. It's wild uh, what they know. Video too, you know. <clears throat> this, for example, this is, uh, you guys have all seen this, right? This has 40 inputs. It, it says, did you come here with the browser? Does your mouse move in a natural way or did it eh, eh? Right? It's crazy. And, and all we see is click. Oh, that was nice. That was easy. But the wall of spam that that thing is pushing away, we don't even realize, right? Uh, so, so here, uh, even this, this is the public DNS flush cache. Google is so responsible for the public DNS, you can flush your own cache on the public DNS with Google. So when you change your website, you come in here, and pretty much it'll for everybody. Uh, so here, uh, 
this is how they get data, is Google Chrome now. It used to be the spider, now they don't even need a spider. Because now you opt in to sending your usage behavior and all of your data to uh, Google. Every, well, probably everyone in here. Um, there's a box in the advanced privacy settings that says automatically report details, uh, uh, oh, but also automatically send usage statistics and crash reports to Google. This is how they are getting real user data in real time, which has always been the holy grail for them, right? Google's trying to establish relevancy. They can't read all of the published web content, no matter what. So, so it's, it's a matter of what, what quality indicators can we hook into that are reasonably reliable, that say, you know, that, that say, this is good, and this is spam, right? And so, so the holy grail is what are users doing on the site? So, uh, so if they, if they, Google had, it was always obsessed with this long click idea. The long click meant a happy user. So that meant I went to a web search, because uh, of course they've always had access to their own analytics. Google.com is just a website. So they have access to all their own user data, of course. And so, so they are very interested in when people do a web search, uh, do they click on the first result and then go to the website and click right back, and go to the second result and click right back, and go to the third result and click right back, and that's called a short click, and they view that as an unhappy user and a bad result that needs maybe more attention, look at the algorithm in that, that space, right? The, the, if it's a, go to the search, everybody who ever does a search goes to the first result and is happy, and doesn't just come back, then they pretty much say, well, this is good, we're probably right on these. You know, it it's matches, matches, right? And so, <coughs> Uh, tall order, it's a tall order, right? Um, and so they have to get data somewhere. It used to be they crawl around and, and, and actually like physically get it. Now we opt into sending it to them. Uh, Google was the largest funder, 99% of the Chromium, Chromium project, which is an open source uh, web browser project that uh, they took and forked into uh, Google Chrome, which is now the most used browser worldwide. Uh, so this is the map, this is the most current one I can find. It's uh, from last year, July. So, so here, that's everywhere. That's where it's the most used browser. Uh, this is in the US, 50%. Second closest is Safari at 28%. So if they had 5% of the data, that would be plenty. They could make perfectly accurate decisions with 5% of the data. With 50% of the data, it's plenty. They don't even use it all. <laughs> uh, so, so how, right, get back to how. So how is that engaging content is still king. Always has, always will be. User behavior is now the indicator, however. <clears throat> and because of that, industry standard content pages are crap. There was an update in December, they all went away. I mean, like all the ranking, anything that was even peaking up to try to rank just in December last year. So uh, no traffic. If you look at your analytics and these companies that pop up these pages, they do a lot of like uh, creative linking on your website to attribute existing traffic on your site to them. If you look closely at your uh, content pages on your analytics, you'll see that no traffic actually goes like from the web to there other than whatever you're paid out of, paying for. You're not, so, so this like idea of like, I'll put up a content page and then just rank, not, doesn't happen. If you don't have users on the page, it's not gonna happen. Real users, there's no tricks anymore. So, ugh, right? I've, I've, had, I've had to tell dealers, you can't be worthless. I spent $48,000 last year on those content pages. Mm. Just because you spent $48,000 on something doesn't make it have value. <laughs> um, so the good news is that you actually are already in the business of creating the content that your users want. You're all content creation machines. And the only content that you should be focused on creating is your well-merchandised inventory. Transparency, photos, and pricing matter. As far as, as, far as you know, the technical underpinnings and all that stuff, you should be looking to your enterprise provider for that. They, you shouldn't be involved 
in blogging <laughs> or, or anything like that for SEO purposes, if it's, if it's for your own brand and you want to connect with your consumers through your uh, customers through a blog, great. Email newsletter, blog, great. But it's not an SEO tool for this industry. That's for the publishing industry. You guys, pub you guys have web, uh, ads on your website? You sell advertising, display banners? Of course not. You sell cars today. You need to sell a car today to somebody around here. So. Not only are you creating the content that your users want, they are constantly engaging with it. And they want to. It's what they came there for. It's the only thing they come there for. And all the other stuff is all fluff and just hype. Um, it happens on the list pages, that's where it happens. So a, a vehicle details page, it's only gonna get hit once and then back to the list page. So list pages where we're able to take advantage of Google's you know, changes of understanding user behavior. And so, so here uh, is your typical site. Doesn't matter, program, boutique, they're all like this. Query string. And why? So easy. Your user queries the database. Easy, it's free. Doesn't cost the website provider anything to do that. Have the, have the user query the database. Easy, no problems, right? Problem is, same problem as dealer skins. Google can't see it. They're not gonna query your database. And, the, and every one of these queries is unique to the software that runs this site. So how would they even know? And they don't care to, they don't care. So it's just, you have one, literally everyone in this room most likely has one inventory page for their entire, inventory list page for their entire inventory, or two, one for new and one for used. <laughs> so here's how it should be. Real pages that exist. See, it's not a matter of that our list pages are better, it's a matter of our list pages exist. Okay, Google understands this. These pages exist. And so for this Chevrolet dealership, even their four by four Fords have a page. And, and, if, you know, and it's not a details page. It's not one car on that page, it's a list page. This is a huge advantage. QSF list pages, huge advantage. It means that your users can read the URL and understand where they are. It means that your users can read the URL in the link that you sent them in the email. And it means that Google understands what's on this page. And of course, this is only one thing. We, we, we serve this up in the most you know, beautiful way where they can't possibly mistake anything. You know? uh, so this makes a huge difference. Again, just to as, uh, you know, run this through again. It makes a difference on broad terms. It makes a difference on uh, specific terms. Right? It, these things are the reason why we're able to get four listings over car gurus. Because we have pages. See? This is, a, this is the term here, and we've got the Camry XLE, number one, but also the Camry list page ranks, and also the just uh, Camry and certified Camrys. So we've got four list pages ranking over Car Gurus, True Car, and not only that, we're triggering the knowledge base on this term. It's a commercial term, we're triggering the knowledge base. So like this is the kind of thing, you see that on your name when you search for your name, because Google gives it to you for free. You're, you're the entity, you, they understand that you're an entity, that's your brand name, and they want to serve the user, you, right? But they don't want to serve the user you particularly for 2017 Toyota Camry, that's cheating. And that's why we get more, it's just more. <laughs> um, so uh, again, just domination, and it matters. It makes a huge difference. 95% of the traffic is seeing searches like this. So even if you're spending 100K, everyone under 40 is still gonna see it like this. If you're spending zero or 100K a month, Here's uh, analytics, 
So program 157, we went to 1,000. It's been four years like that. This is a CDJR in uh, New Jersey. This is a site I'm proud of. I uh, launched this website in 2008 during that aforementioned time uh, where dealer skins was the largest thing in the industry. And uh, if you didn't have dealer skins, you had your uh, inventory most likely iframed in from HomeNet. So literally no one had a vehicle details page even. We were building database driven websites that didn't have a, a girl walk out there and try to sell you the car, but did own Google. <laughs> so Sandy Springs Ford, they were a struggling uh, Ford dealership in Atlanta, 32nd out of 34 Ford dealerships in their PMA. They own, this is 2008, so it caught everybody by surprise. They own Google, they own Atlanta, and they went to number one in nine months in Atlanta. Uh, within about 14, 15 months, they were one of the top uh, 104 dealerships in the country. And in four years, a dealership that they bought for zero, they sold for $40 million. They were losing $100,000 a month uh, when they bought this store, and they sold it for $40 million just four years later. And, you know, I had a part of that. Th that's just a part. You know, they, they were great operators. You know, Brian Logan ran that place, and uh, he also made a point of, of uh, poaching all the best GMs and made them salespeople. Kept a, kept a tight little knit sales group that trained every day, and, uh, and like 18 salespeople selling, you know, four, five, six hundred cars. <laughs> um, so, so here, like, not a lot to look at. But man, when you searched for inventory, you sure found this website and you didn't find anyone else. There's one of your early vehicle details pages, probably first one in the industry was uh, one, of these, one of these early versions of the website, vehicle details page. And list page, 10 years I've been doing list pages. Database driven website with real list page. It works every time. I've never once seen it not work. Uh, we should talk about this. I don't know how much time I got left, but we should just mention, I always like to mention speed. Speed's never going to go away. Yes, okay. Yes. And we do that as well uh, in uh, metros, primarily. Yeah. So uh, we don't find it necessary everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, here, okay, so here, this page. All right, uh, speed. Not new, but you'd sure think it is. <laughs> okay, Google does not advertise changes to their search algorithm. They're very secretive about that and have been forever. Only a couple of times have they actually come out and said anything publicly about it. This is one of those times. On the Webmaster Central blog in 2010, they said, here at Google, we're obsessed with speed. Today, we're including a new signal in our search ranking algorithms, site speed. Faster sites create happy users, faster sites improve user experience. We've decided to take site speed into account in search rankings, which seems good, especially in 2010, where that was a great indicator, you know? That was a great indicator of quality. Of the, if the business cared about their website, it would load fast. If they didn't, it wouldn't. Um, so, so they made this public. This is very important to Google that the websites load fast because Google can't grow anymore. Google has absorbed all the market share they're ever going to absorb. And if they absorb any more, then they're going to have even more antitrust problems. <laughs> but what they have figured out is that they can still increase their revenues and still uh, grow uh, financially by increasing the amount of time people spend on the internet as a whole because the more time you spend on the internet as a whole the more ads you're inevitably going to click on is the theory and so so they care that people have a good experience when they come to your website because they're afraid that people are going to have a bad experience on your website and be like ah that internet thing you know man nah, don't need it <laughs> so uh, now they just had another one though and here, uh, this was in uh, 2000, this is this year, uh, speed updates now rolling out for all users. They actually pre-announced this one quite a bit before they did, did this. Uh, so 
if your mobile site doesn't load fast, it's hurting you. It's hurting your ranking. Uh, people really care about the speed of page. Speed has been used in ranking for some time. <laughs> page speed will be a ranking factor for mobile searches. So, I mean, secret is, I guess, I read all the patents. Google patents everything. They are obsessed with owning everything. So, you know, my secret's the same as the, I do on the 11 by 11 Rubik's Cube, <laughs> is know everything and do the work. <laughs> it's a two-step process. An AMP page? So that's primarily for the publishing industry. Um, uh, so that's really a publishing tool for uh, like your, your big uh, news providers. So one other time recently, December, Google comes out uh, against WordPress at WordCamp. This is a developer conference that WordPress does once a year. And if you have a WordPress site, you know it's slow. It's a second and a half difference. You have to carry all that luggage so that you, in case you ever need a calendar, you can put it right in there, right in that plugin. You can, in case you ever need widget, this widget, it'll plug right in there. But you still have to carry all that apparatus every time you load it for a user. It's ridiculous. You know, uh, WordPress is built by developers, open source. It's really kind of built for developers. It's even built for developers to monetize and build their own little widget and everything. So they're all in there like monetizing for themselves. Well, it's open source code. They go in there and change the code for themselves. And they do. You know, uh, uh, there's some serious security holes in WordPress too. So if you're not getting the update, the security updates, you need those. Uh, Google's also has this tool everybody should be aware of. They, they make it so easy for you to know what's going on with your website. This uh, will even give you a list of all the things that are slowing it down. Uh, yes? Sure. The first question is, you stated on creating multiple pages, mm -hmm. right? whether they're model specific or link specific. Yes. Now, should those be visible on the site to the users? Yes. They should be the pages that they're actually using. See, there's been a, a so some, some companies that can't, they, no one can fix this query string thing, right? They'd all have to rewrite it from scratch. And so until they're ready to throw out their entire software and do what I did and start with a blank text file and a bunch of brilliant experts, uh, it's never going to happen for them. There's, not, there's no way they can just like put query string free on the website. That's built from the core. So one of the things that I've seen uh, in response to this is some companies building list, little list pages that are specific for that, you know, here's an F-150 page, and then here's a problem with that, two problems, is one, no matter how many pages, you build 30 or 40 and one for every model, it's not much. People search specific, manual, for, you know, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, those things, they search for that. And so, so the, you know, that's not enough, one, two, it has no users. As soon as the user selects anything on their back to query string. So you don't have users on those pages. Even, so it's, it's just a window dressing to try to say, hey, oh, hey, we do what Remora does too. And this is all you need, and that, that does the same thing that Remora does. But yeah. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Now, yeah. will that slow down the site you have on those pages? No, so uh, it shouldn't if it's done properly. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's see what else we got. Oh, answers. Okay, so questions. How much time do I have? Just a couple minutes. Ten minutes? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Great question. And, and uh, so the pages are created programmatically automatically uh, based on your inventory. Uh, we are 100% unique vehicle description, 100% unique titles. Uh, schema is all created automatically. Uh, all of the vehicle details pages, list pages are created automatically. 
And so it's very much a hands-free deal. Um, we're never going to ask you to blog or tell you that you need to blog to rank. <laughs> uh, you know, so our process is to provide best practices from a technical backbone standpoint, just the facts, just science. And we provide that best practice and then we don't argue with you, really. You want to do it your way, we do it your way. We always do it your way. We only do it your way. But we start with best practice. So the, uh, we build the sites on development domains. We work with you in private. Uh, we go back and forth until you absolutely love it. And then when we flip, because we propagate the domain ahead of time, it just changes for everybody instantly with no downtime. Uh, all your processes at the dealership stay the same. Uh, you use your same inventory management provider. You use your same CM, uh, CRM. And uh, everything ports right in there in the same way. Uh, so it works every time, and it works for everyone who, you know, turns those opportunities into business. We're the most expensive, but it's the most impactful. And if you're turning into business, it doesn't matter. A lot of your search terms were like long strings. What, yes. What's your thoughts on uh, common ones like local dealer Yeah, so there's certainly a myriad of search terms and a myriad of ways that people search. Um, I, I encourage people to dig deep because uh, it's, it, you know, you only, if you only look at the top performer, performing terms by volume, you're really only going to see service terms, which are, is, makes sense. That's what's the most volume that there's going to be, right? You guys uh, sell a dozen cars, but you write a hundred service ROs in the same day. So, so there's more need, people need service on their cars more than they need uh, to buy a new car. Um, so it's natural that it would, it would, it would kind of uh, pan out that way in your analytics. When you're looking for sales purposes, it's important that you look at detailed searches because the detailed searches are the ones that, um, the ones that show intent. As soon as somebody throws a color, a drivetrain, a uh, trim, a model, well, not quite model, but, but uh, they, they start putting this specific stuff in and they're done with the research phase. Like, right, we all probably been talking about all weekend, the funnel, right, the sales funnel and this, and this consumer funnel where they come and they do all their research up here and then they get a little bit clearer idea and then here. Well, well when, they're, when they're here is when they're doing these specific searches. And they don't, you know, uh, they don't always have uh, the town name in them or whatever, but they do a lot still. They really do. Uh, and, and, uh, but Google has become much more location aware and people's search behavior has, has adapted to that and changed too. And so this works regardless. And we actually are tracking thousands of terms. We track not just uh, your results, we also track your competitors in the area. So we actually have maintain a uh, visual and a very detailed um, a report of the landscape, your landscape. And so we know like right away if you're not, who, who we need to beat and who we're crushing and all that. Uh, so you know, we work really close, close together with you. Like I said, I um, uh, cut my teeth in the car business uh, and, and it's a special, special industry for me personally. Um, you know, we're, we're a small company, we're serving 180 dealers across the country, all makes uh, and independent used also. And uh, we're split between Jacksonville and Denver. So I headquartered and started this company in Jax and uh, expanded out to Denver about two and a half years ago. And so we're, we're about even on both. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, no, the, if you link to it, it will, uh, they'll see it, yeah. Are you saying it has to be a hard coded link, not a JavaScript link? Well, it would have to be a link that they track, that they follow. Which would be any kind of Pretty much, JavaScript yeah. Links, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, then what's the exact advantage of having those URL pages versus query strings? Is the engagement on the pages. So the engage just because Google has a page indexed isn't doesn't mean it's going to give it preferential treatment. Okay, so just be just because it's in index, right, doesn't mean that it's ever going to be on the top ten results for anything. 
Um, and even if you can do a specific exactly, this is exactly, and get it to show up somewhere, it's just not impactful. It's not impactful. But a myriad of search that just crushes everyone and everyone and it for everything works. Um, that, that, uh, that requires real pages that exist. And so while you can link to the pages to get them indexed, that's not going to necessarily give them preferential treatment. It's very unlikely that they'll ever get there because of engagement. Oh. Well, thank you all guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have a booth and a foosball table. Love to play some foosball with you guys and, and talk further about your specific uh, situation. Uh, we're in the back. Thank you.